Hello and welcome to another episode of Video Game Logic. Today's episode was recorded on December the 3rd, 2018. I'm your host, Santa Claus, and with me, as always, the naughty elf on a shelf himself. Caffeine rage? I'm not sure how to feel about this once again. (laughs) On today's show, Merry Christmas! It's our Christmas special, which, because of time travel and the internet, was recorded nearly a month in advance. On today's show, again... Squared. <laughs> we're going to be having the oh, naughty. The third. Yeah, we're going to be having the naughty and nice list, as well as our Christmas wish list for 2019 in gaming. And and that's it, because you know, pre-recording and all that. Hello, Rage. Hello. How are you? Uh, well, since it's a month ahead of time, hard to tell. Yeah, at this point in time, <laughs> when you're listening to this, dear listener, which will be the Friday after Christmas, so uh, Merry Christmas, recorded early to be listened to late. Isn't the internet just grand? But Capitalism yeah, the, ho! Yeah. On the 28th, which is when this goes up, my in-laws will be here, uh, so I don't know how I'll be. Probably hiding in my office. I took that day off of work. So, uh, so, uh, so securely turtled. Yeah, anything goes, I suppose. Um, but at this point in time, with it being the beginning of December, I'm just sleepy. So this could go a number of ways. Yeah. So by the end, you'll be dopey, and uh, maybe with a little bit more schooling, you'll be able to become Doc. <laughs> I had someone call me a shrink today. That's the first time in my career that anyone's ever called me a shrink. Oh, I guess Biff doesn't count? Well, I mean, you know, within my professional setting. Ah. It was, I had a chuckle about it. He's like, he was like, why are you laughing? Did I like offend you or something? I was like, no. Just you're the first person ever in this context to call me a shrink. He was like, is that a good thing? I was like, I don't know, but it's funny. I've been doing this for years now. I guess it's mostly just Hollywood that calls me, calls us shrinks. (laughs) But, uh words and things what was it oh yeah yeah, this is either gonna be (laughs) yeah this is either gonna be really good or really bad and we shall see at least in terms of like where my state is at tonight it's almost like i'm slightly drunk it's kind of how i feel right now you're not even playing the drinking game i'm not i've just i mean the only thing i'm drinking is water because i have a feeling i'm going to be a little bit more cursy this uh uh episode than usual just because we're talking about things i don't like <laughs> that would be pretty difficult you swear a lot more than i do you're, are you fucking kidding me you're definitely the the, <laughs> the bigger or the better sailor out of the two of us that's popped in cough drop i'm not really coughing on that much right well, now well, I'm not I, sure I, I, I would say it. i wouldn't say the better because i don't really care for spinach i'm papa the sailor man <laughs> That was a weird noise my mouth just made. Not sure how well that came uh, from the mic. I hope that was your mouth. It sounded kind of like a fart, I think, but no, it was oh, my yeah. mouth. Definitely my mouth. Uh, and I, I hear another I, noise. I fart all the time, and the mic never picks it up. No, sometimes it's hard to. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to tell if I, uh, you know, if it's my headset or not. But no, I, that's probably not the. That's probably not the Christmas choo choo. That's probably not the Polar Express. <laughs> <laughs> I watched that today. Again. Again. <laughs> nice. Uh, you've okay. already complained about it. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, with, uh, with uh, Uncanny Valley Tom Hanks and Uncanny Valley Tom, Tom Hanks, and also Tom Hanks, who is also in Uncanny Valley. Indeed, just Tom Hanks is all the way down. Speak. Speaking of all the way down, question mark bad segue. Let's go and start talking about those listicles. Um, so we're going to do so dirty. that. That was the idea. So we're going to do the our naughty lists first, and I guess we'll just alternate. Um, mm-hmm. And then if there's like one that we've copied, just mark the other one out. And we can both talk about it at the same time 
I mean, not that we can't talk about <laughs> each other's as well, but you know what I mean? How many did are, you are, have? Are, are you sure you're not drunk? I have five on each. Okay. I have six on each, so I'll let you go first. Okay, well, the first one on my naughty list that deserves a big, beautiful piece of clean coal is, I would say, the majority of the triple gaming industry, uh, triple A gaming industry, because of the rampant fucking bullshit that's been going on this last year. Microtransactions out the wazoo, loot boxes like crazy, just reports of toxic workplaces, uh, rampant uh, crunch time. And the point where it's starting to feel like it's a little tough for the industry to be, you know, something resembling stable. And you can see now why, you know, me populating the naughty list was a little bit tough because this is a little overarching. But if I broke this down to the individual parts, that would be my entire list. Well, see, that's what I did. Most of my things you said... With your overarching single. That was, <laughs> let's see, one, two, three <laughs> things off of my list. <laughs> I just knocked out half your list. Yes, you did. That's okay. We'll just go with it. It'll be fine. We'll work it out. As you can hear, dear listener, we did not discuss this beforehand. Obviously. Uh, which makes it either a lot better or a lot worse, and we're not sure which. So uh, we have not discussed this before, and you're also a little uh, punch drunk. Yeah. So the three of mine that you knocked off, I'll just go ahead and name them specifically because I went specifics. Telltale Studios, when it closed, treating uh, I, I, had that on, I had that on its individual thing. Oh, so you thought that was bad enough that it was its own separate that, thing? That was bad enough that it's, own, it's a, its own separate thing on my list. Okay. Uh, then I put the Red Dead Scandal, the 100-hour work weeks specifically. And then <laughs> loot boxes, dot, 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 <laughs> fucking loot boxes, dot, dot, yeah, dot. Yeah, we've just talked about loot boxes forever this uh, last, well, really couple years, honestly. But this year has been by far the worst. And yeah. uh, to the point where EA is uh, just flagrantly uh, skipping the law and uh, trying to push them through in a in a country that's pretty much banned them i mean that should tell you that something is not right doesn't it yeah loot boxes by the way they're gambling no oh, really and this isn't the only time loot boxes is going to come up in the show either <laughs> oh no but yeah i mean loot box has been a huge hot button issue that has affected or that has been a part of many game developers' releases for the last couple of years, and it's just gotten worse. Um, late 2017 was when I think everything sort of, may, maybe early this year, was when everything, I think, seemed to come to a head. Yeah, and it was I, enough I think the big government noticed. Yeah, yeah the boiling point was uh, uh, Battlefront 2. But, I mean, now that government is involved, I don't, I don't think that, that they're getting out of this. Definitely in the EU and Australia, uh, probably Canada, they're going to start getting cracked down on. And, I mean, even the United States has taken notice. And if you can get the United States to take notice, then you have royally fucked up. But, I mean, it's just, we talked, was it last week or two weeks ago? I guess at time of recording, at time of listening, it would have been like a month and a half ago, mm -hmm. give or take, um, about the report about children uh, child gambling. Oh yeah, uh, the BBC in, report. In, yeah, in line Quad with loot box principles. Yeah, or loot the the prevalence of loot box. I said principle. I meant prevalence. Um, correl correlation does not always equal causation, but sometimes it does, and I think we're seeing that uh, it's some amount of correlation there between loot boxes and increase in child gambling because loot boxes are gambling. But yeah, the game industry can go fuck itself in that respect. They have been very, very naughty. They need a spanking and some beautiful clean coal in their stockings <laughs> this year for that. Yeah. Can um, you see why I did this? It was more of an overarching thing than anything else. Yeah. It's because they're, uh, they're so interconnected, especially uh, with the crunch time as well. It, it's 
yeah, there's this disconnect for me where the game industry is making money like never before, yet they're, they're screwing over their workers like never before. And having just some absurd uh, turnover rates while, you know, the industry is the biggest in the world. It just doesn't make sense to me outside of just sheer greed and sheer naughtiness and not even the uh, sexy kind. Indeed. I'm just marking those off of my list. What was the <laughs> other things other than loot boxes and the, you, that was on yours? Uh, well, I meant you were just going for like high employee turnover mm -hmm. <clears throat> did i knock out another one no no i just i mean you did say that you were treating the telltale studios as one different so yeah that one's fine but yeah, i mean you know, so because of uh, other issues but we'll get to that <clears throat> yeah um, okay well uh you up <laughs> yeah so who are you shipping coal off to i guess i'll do another sort of game industry overview um, in 2018, on the naughty list, this huge shift from big companies, you know, the, the big ones, Ubisoft, Bungie, EA, Activision, mm -hmm. et cetera, from traditional, even if they've been pretty, like, fucked up traditional gaming experiences to this live services mentality. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't think of live services. I, I, mm -hmm. Otherwise, I would have put that in, in my first one as well. But, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, I did. And fuck you, live services. I mean, we've come, we've we've brought this up several times throughout the year. Like every time a publisher's like, "Oh, we're going to shoot for live services. We want to increase our, you know, make everything basically an MMO." Yeah, especially Ubisoft. Didn't they say that they wanted to uh, make fewer games, but had uh, each game monetized more? They have said that. Um, I don't know if it's been official. There's been rumors going around that like the games that they've released this year and over the next couple of years are going to be their games for a while. And they're going to be releasing fewer games overall, trying to draw out the longevity of what they've released. Um, at its core, I don't have a problem with a air quotes live services game or an MMO. I mean, that's basically what these are trying to be pseudo MMOs. Yeah. But the problem but is when the market is agreed. saturated, yeah, when the when the market is saturated with nothing but MMOs, and then all of the MMOs are essentially just trying to pry your wallet open for every last cent, you're going to burn people out, and you're going to turn gaming from a hobby into itself to, like, I'm not a gamer. I play X game or Y game. Like, that's what I do for my hobby. And for some people, like, that's okay. Like, you know, you do you. But I know that myself and probably most of the listeners of this show, we play a lot of different games. And I don't want all of the big publishers to go that direction. Plus, the way they do it is just so scummy. If mm -hmm. they were less greedy, if they were less reliant on microtransactions and loot boxes, and just went with a solid subscription model or... Yeah, but that doesn't get with... all the money. Yeah, I know. Or free to play with even just cosmetics. Like cosmetics are kind of like the top of a slippery slope, but they're the thing that I'm most okay with. You know, cosmetic microtransactions or DLC. Um, if they would just stay there or just do like old school, you pay a subscription model and maybe buy the expansions, like that would be fine. But they're not doing that. They're trying to wrangle every last cent out of you and psychologically assault you with all of their bullshit. So, well, there was, and now I'm blanking on his name from Rockstar. Uh, it was mentioned in Jim Sterling's latest video, at least as of time of recording, where while uh, a Grand Theft Auto V was literally the biggest property in gaming, or I should say in entertainment for revenue generated. Yep. He was talking about how you can't give away things. Right. To some extent, I do get that mentality. It's like, you know, I've heard my whole life, if you're good at something, don't do it for free. But even if you're not, air quotes, giving things away, you could still be fair and not try to manipulate the people who you're selling things to. But these people are, these companies are manipulating their audience, trying to manipulate the customers to spend even more money. And it's not even the old, you know, the age old like value add or whatever, like, 
ah, well, you're getting this. Perhaps you'd like to buy this. It's like, no, you're you're getting this. Well, Fuck considering you, you're how buy they, this anyways. Uh, considering how they balance the beta of Red Dead Redemptions online. <laughs> oh boy. Or have you heard about that? No, I've seen that. I'm sure we'll be discussing that tomorrow Ooh. night on the regular show. Uh, let's just put it this way: a little teaser. What would you think would be more expensive in the economy? A golden ring or a can of baked beans? <laughs> I mean, you would think a ring. You would be wrong. I know you would, but you would think a ring. Kind of fucked up. Oh, yeah. In more ways than one. But anyways, yeah, that's my... That's who else is getting coal. Shipping out some coal to all these people. All these companies. I see, I keep saying people, but I do mean companies. Well, well companies are people, uh, according and, to the government. Yeah, according to the United States government. Maybe a few others. And I could hear that eye twitch. No, my eye didn't twitch. Well, it's too sleepy. Well, it's a good thing we don't have to ship coal to this next one. Because it already has plenty of coal. Because my second one is a special mention to Bethesda for the absolute clusterfuck that is Fallout 76. I was on so, my they don't ha- so they don't even have to go anywhere for the uh, beautiful clean coal. It's in West Virginia already. <laughs> yep, that was on my list too. It says Bethesda dot 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 what the fuck dot 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 Fallout 76. Well, mine That's is... Uh, in my notes. My, my, Mine is Bethesda deserves a special mention for the clusterfuck that is Fallout 76. (laughs) I mean, it's just at every single turn. This makes No Man's Sky look competent at launch. And that's a feat. Yeah. No Man's Sky was a mess. But yeah, have we, did we talk about, had the news broke about the the back issue when we recorded (laughs) last week's show? Uh, uh, it, It was starting to. See, yeah, that's the latest thing, at least at the time of recording. And the uh, hilarious part of that, okay, they're they're finally getting around to put uh, to making the bags after getting threatened with lawsuits. Oh, I haven't but, seen that yet. Yeah, it, that just broke. They just tweeted that out, saying that they're working uh, on uh, getting manufacturing uh, up and running for it. Why now? You know, maybe the uh, uh, the threat of litigation. You know, uh, but. Uh, it came out that they actually gave better backpacks full of swag to <laughs> the content to content creators and influencers, and people were fucking pissed. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Now I have to say that those were would be almost certainly two completely separate yeah, yeah, true. things. Like the bags didn't look the same. That would be part of yeah, standard yeah, sort yeah, of those promotion. Two, yeah, those were two very different bags, but at the same time. I mean, it doesn't yeah. excuse it, but it, they would be too. It, it makes it far more hilarious. Yeah. And on top of uh, that, you also have the refund issue. Uh, the whole, oh, we'll give you a refund. No, we won't. Yes, we will. No, we won't. And the fact that it's on its own little uh, section of the internet uh, because it's running through the Bethesda launcher, uh, they don't have the Steam refund. <laughs> Uh, guarantees, even though you know, the Steam refund would not be you know, all that great here either. Yeah, you'd be in a No Man's Sky situation too because you'd play it for I don't know, five, six hours and be like, oh, this game doesn't really change into anything good but by then you're <laughs> past the guaranteed two yeah. hour window, so. Yeah, and that's on top of uh, uh, the game being buggy even for a Bethesda game and no promise of modders uh, f- coming in to fix it for quite a while. Yeah, everything about Fallout 76 has just been bad. Just yeah. all of it. Uh, everything from... about about Fallout 76 has basically been raw Bethesda without the uh, community being able to fix it. Yeah. It's a bad game, buggy, buggier than previous games. Lack of anything interesting to make up for it. The whole thing has had more problems. Like, they've had so much negative press between, you know, bugs, not being able to uninstall the game. Or uh, play well, it even once it's installed, wait, crashing all, your computer. All you have to do is wait for the uh, for the launcher to randomly uninstall it. <laughs> yeah, the the yeah. multiple fifty gig downloads for patches for it, or air quotes patches, um, 
just bad gameplay, bad design. It's been reviewed poorly by everyone. Major review outlets refusing to continue playing it. It's so bad. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen a major review outlets be this hostile. Yeah. Then and then to top it all off, like this whole PR mess that is going on right now with this whole collector's edition bag issue. The the only like the only reason that we've ever said is like if you pre-order something is to get something like that, some kind of limited run, special edition, physical stuff that you couldn't get otherwise, or maybe you could get it at a later date on eBay for more than you would pay to get it initially. Honestly, at this rate, but I would be shocked if you uh, don't find it at Goodwill within the next month. <laughs> yeah, the the nylon shitty bags. And that's no, I was talking about happened. the entire thing. Oh, yeah. But, you know, and then how that turned into a mess. The best, the best slash worst thing about it was that first guy who posted their response, like where they were like, we don't intend to do anything about it. Like I laughed. Uh, That became the new, uh, don't you have phones? (laughs) Yeah. Which became the, the new, you know, which replaced the pride and accomplishment thing from EA. But I just like, I laughed. And then I was like, Oh, this is turning out to be real. Oh, like, yeah, I get that yeah. the companies probably I, feel that way all the time, but that's one of those things. It's like you just don't say it. Like everyone pretends and it's all fine, but then you say it, and then everyone's like, "Well, fuck you now." <laughs> this isn't the only time this is going to come up in the show, guys. <laughs> We're going to swing back around this to the at the wish list part when I talk about what I want for f- <laughs> the, f- the future. So, yeah. You took uh, another but, one of mine. Well, sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. What? What? Are, uh, Bethesda definitely uh, deserved a special mention. They did. They did. Bethesda, you're getting some coal. Some. The, we're not the, even going to send the, you the beautiful, the, clean coal. That, uh, they have the irradiated, irradiated coal in, uh, you know, uh, Fallout West Virginia. Well, we're going to send them some other coal. I got coal in Tennessee. I'm going to send them some Tennessee coal. But that's not beautiful and clean. That's the point. They don't need beautiful, clean coal. Well, maybe they do. Maybe they, uh, you know, uh, they could uh, throw that in the engine and, you know, gum up the works. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right. Do you have more to? Uh, no, I mean. <laughs> okay. So oh. next on my list, uh, I'll do my only remaining, I guess, unique one. Um, EA with mm-hmm. Command & Conquer Mobile. I was very, they're very naughty for this. <laughs> very naughty. Um, taking a game franchise, which I love and adore, and have played almost every single one of them, if not every single one of them over the years, uh, to turn it into a garbage, boring, shitty, a- average at best mobile game makes me sad. I was very sad. I played it with like the tiniest glimmer of hope that maybe it would be even just like 2% more interesting than what I saw. Cynical cash grab. Yep. And it's a, yep. It's a cynical cash grab. So, I mean, I'm not surprised EA's done that with like everything over the years going all the way back to dungeon keeper mobile and tons of other games that they've developed both for the mobile space and for the, uh, you know, PC, console, whatever, marketplace. Just constantly cynical cash grabs, killing studios that we love or have loved in the past. Just destroying things that we love. And EA destroyed another thing that I love with Command & Conquer Mobile. And they get some coal. A lot of coal from me. (laughs) A mammoth tank full of coal. Just dumping it all over there their campus of their, whatever their main, wherever their main office is. I'm going to drive my mammoth tank up there, <laughs> fire both of those barrels. But instead of, of shells, well, it's well, just going to like spray coal. Well, don't forget to uh, flick the card onto the battlefield. But um, you got me there. You got me there. So uh, I have a someone instead okay. of, a, of a corporation. 
Okay. All right. Let's see if you could uh, guess who the supreme ass clown is. Donald Trump? No. No, even though that would be a good guess. <laughs> I mean, I don't I don't know. Todd Howard? No. I guess that would be How about Agit fucking Pa? Oh, okay. So we're getting a little outside the specific purview of gambling, but that's a or gambling. <laughs> Gaming. See, this, is, this is my sleepiness kicking in. Uh, you've uh, played too many games. I have loot boxes, but uh, it's kind of outside, but at the same time, not because of the net neutrality thing. Yeah. Uh, but also uh, them talking recently about looking at loot boxes and not, me not trusting that smug little son of a bitch. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I don't. I don't trust him. Uh, but most of this is just stemming from the whole net neutrality debacle. Uh, where, you know, just rampant lying for one about what net neutrality is, the series of douchey videos that he did, uh, and then, uh, uh, then just lying about the DDoS attack, uh, saying that their servers were DDoSed when it was people rushing to try to fill out the forms, and then they just ignored it, saying that it was all bots. Fuck him. Yeah, and punch him in his big stupid face. Smash he deserves his comedy coffee mug. No, no, no. He deserves a comedy coffee mug uh, full of coal. Yeah, and then smash it on his smug face, <laughs> and then piss on him. Oh, what? we're getting kinky now. It's not that type of naughty list. <laughs> Whoops. All right, so this is this is my last one um, because. A, you know, overlap. Um, but I think you already said that you pulled it out separate. So Telltale mm -hmm. Studios, just everything oh, yeah. that happened yeah, when they shut well. down. Yeah, just the scummy behavior, uh, beating a dead horse until it no longer twitches, and then not having the foresight to actually change what needed to be uh, changed. And living from just deal to deal to the point where one uh, non disclosure agreement essentially bankrupted them and just their overall scummy behavior to their uh, then ex-employees with no severance pay i mean it's just it, it's the it's just a comedy of douchiness you know comedy of douchey errors but yeah i mean that was terrible and disgusting behavior the way they treated their employees I think the writing was on the wall whenever we started seeing some of their writing staff jumping ship beforehand or, you know, being fired beforehand. But it's just ridiculous about how it all went down. The The fact that they were running on such a thin margin and that they kept... Uh, it's the it's the definition of insanity. They kept trying to do the same thing and expecting a different result. You know? Yeah. I don't know if I'll get through it enough to discuss it on tomorrow's recording or not, but their last project for Netflix that they finished, the Minecraft, mm -hmm. that's interesting, actually, the way that it's done. But I haven't had enough time to really get all the way through it to check it out the rest of the way. So that may or may not come up tomorrow. Yeah, I don't have much to talk about tomorrow, which is in the distant past now, because, uh, you know, this ate up uh, most of my free day to be able to uh, play games. And Oh, uh, I've got... Sorry. Well, I know, you you have playing the Explorers. I do, and I might... I'll probably say Battletech, too, for another week. Oh, I boy. Started a, I started a new game. I haven't really spent enough time with the new stuff. It's good. It's good. Battletech's going to show up a little bit later on this list. Twice. It's going to show up twice. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, uh, both in the wish list or uh, in the nice list as well? One in the nice list and one in the wish list. All right. Um, well, uh, since you took my number four, my next one is my last one. And it's also a sum one. Okay. I had a choice of uh, two uh, people that I'm wanting to put here. Uh, but... I'm going to put the swatting asshole. I'm not even going to mention his name, but the guy that uh, did the false swatting that killed a guy. Oh shit. Was that this year? Yeah. I thought that was last year. Uh, I think it was this year. I know he, uh, I know he was uh, 
uh, found guilty uh, just recently. I mean, with it still ongoing, it obviously qualifies for this year. I thought that I, I guess the I'm, initial incident I thought took place late last I may, year. But, I may have, uh, uh, you yeah, know, it all ran together, but I mean, it's just it's been a really yeah. We're we're truly in the worst timeline. Mm-hmm. It's bad. Yeah, now I'm fair. just double checking. No, I mean, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, he he was charged in May. Yeah. Okay. That's. I mean, that's this year. Jesus, that seems like <laughs> yeah, so long ago. I mean, like, I guess it's been six, seven months, but it feels like <laughs> six or seven years. I have. I'm starting to get gray in my beard. I was. Have, I've grown it out real big to be mm-hmm. Office Santa. Um, and, and you don't even very, to, uh, put a uh, 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 yeah, put white in it. It's very noticeable that I've got some gray and some white in there. And I didn't have that. I mean, I'm still I'm still in my 20s. Like I know you can get start getting gray early, but I feel like I've got a disproportionate amount of gray hair for my age. Well, it's hard to tell with uh, me because uh, my hair tries to uh, like I have a real almost uh, blonde highlight to it. So it's hard to tell if it's trying to go gray or it's just like, oh, I'm going to be blonde today. <laughs> My beard smells really nice right now, though. Since it's growing out, I've got like some beard balm and like some beard shaping gel. It smells very nice. Makes me happy. Anyways, yeah, let's just put it this way: the plea deal was, uh, or the plea was in June of this year. So, gonna sip, ship some cold to that guy's prison cell. <laughs> Although maybe that's a bad idea. Maybe he'll like find some way to exploit it in in prison. I don't know. Uh, sell it uh, on the black market in the prison. All right, make it a real black market. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll just send him like. Yeah, okay, the, the uh, actual uh, event what happened on December twenty eighth of uh, two thousand seventeen. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of blurring the line, but it would be after the uh, Christmas special. So, technically, I'm correct. <laughs> but, but because oh. it's uh, between the two Christmas episodes. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. We're, I'll... No, no, no. We're both technically correct, which is the even better form of correct. <laughs> right. <laughs> so is that your last naughty list item? Yeah, that was my last. Okay. And then I also have six on my nice list. How many do you have in your nice list? Five? I have five. Okie dokie. We'll, we'll see if there's any overlap here. All right. Um, do you want me to go first? Uh, if you want to. So my first one is uh, Hairbrain Schemes with Battletech for the year. Um, I mean, we talked at length in the Game Club episode and in the episodes leading up to that how much I love the Battletech franchise. And I was so happy that that game turned out good. Now, not perfect. I think I said it was like a, a B-plus game that my sort of love for the series bumped it up to like an A-minus just because I was so heavily invested in it. But, I mean, it's got... I, I have genuinely over 300 hours in that game now, um, and, and I just picked up Flashpoint, the the first uh, major DLC or expansion for the game. Um, I'd say I would classify it more as expansion, really, because of how much stuff it adds. But, you know, not going to go on about that in this, this special episode. Again, uh, it, again technically. <laughs> well, I mean, it'll be again, again, again again but anyways like i'm not going to go on about that right now but i mean i've just gotten so much enjoyment out of that game this year and i intend to get much more enjoyment out of it to come like i get maybe one of those games a year a couple of years ago maybe three years ago it was Kerbal space program and then factorio and then i got sucked back into eve online somewhere around there and then quit that again and you know i i relapsed but it was okay i got better (laughs) <laughs> and this year for me, it's uh, definitely... then I then I kind of triggered you with Dwarf Fortress somehow. Yeah, but th- this year has definitely been BattleTech for me. It's like, I mean, it, you know, I was saying like uh, maybe Planet Explorers could just game a year material for me just because of all the itches it scratches. But then I started playing BattleTech again. I was like, no, Planet Explorers doesn't stand a chance. But yeah, battle. What what do we get for the nice? The naughty list obviously gets cold. What do we get to the nice list? Blowjobs. Oh <laughs> uh, well, if you want to suck on a neck, 
<laughs> yeah, give the whole studio a blowjob. <laughs> Unless they don't want it. Like, I don't want to sexually assault anybody. But, you know. No, too late. It sounds like it. It sounds like it. Yeah. All right. It, so, yeah, even though it's right. going to be difficult for some of my list. Well, I'll find a way. Uh, well, since you did a game studio, why don't I do a game studio as well, just completely coincidentally, because that's the first on my list. CD Projekt Red for bucking the trend and giving real news and actual gameplay for Cyberpunk and also not wanting to rush it out and have it be a complete game. I know that's kind of shocking, isn't it? Yeah. In this day and age, it is. And also uh, defending their position on uh, saying that uh, a game about uh, being a cyberpunk uh, universe is inherently political and not shying away from it, which is kind of a bold statement, huh? Yeah, CD Projekt Red, with the way at least that they develop their games, I don't know enough about the studio. I've heard some stories that they can be, yeah, of course, uh, you know, bad developers or bad bosses or whatever to their employees. I've heard those stories, but at least in the way that they design develop and treat games and gamers like they're one of i'd say the last holdouts for genuine like game developers and they do a good job at it yeah and the demo reel that they showed for it uh was fucking impressive and they said that it wasn't done that, that was yeah the alpha state yeah i didn't watch the whole thing but i watched, I watched some the, of it i watched the uh, most of it that was that the one that was like uh, nearly an hour or something like that. It was half an hour, forty five minutes. Okay, uh, and, yeah. and they got uh, dark in it. Uh, you know, they had the woman being chopped up and uh, having her cybernetics uh, sold. I mean, they're not shying away. Yeah, which is good. I mean, I, I like mm -hmm. games that have that sort of deep, dark subject material in it. I mean, I don't want the whole thing. Like, I mean, there's games out there that exist. There's people that want to play them, and I you want like, the depth. I do, yeah, I want the depth. I want the depth. But, uh, yeah. Okay, was that it for... Yeah, uh, it, it's uh, mostly on them defending uh, their position and, you know, not rushing out to be a cash grab and wanting to essentially uh, kind of define, uh, define uh, what a cyberpunk game is because we have bits and pieces of it, mostly, uh, you know, Deus Ex, but a you know next generation cyberpunk game, not just yeah. in uh, you know the name cyberpunk, I should say, you know, but the genre of cyberpunk, right? Okay, so my next one is also a studio, mm -hmm. sort of, um, and so I had put this list together before the uh, Jim Quisition for this week, but oh boy, <laughs> Jim Sterling mentioned it and described it better than I could. So I put Sony um, for Spider-Man and um, um, damn it. I just put Sony for their games. What was the other big AAA game they exclusive they released? God of War for Spider-Man mm. and God of War this year um, because they developed two. I, I haven't played either of them, but by all accounts, they are excellent games that don't lean into microtransaction loot box bullshit like they're actual you know old school games um and the way that jim sterling described it huh with unlockables as well isn't there yeah with actual honest to god unlockables and and stuff instead of you having to like buy it it's just like do a mission get a thing complete a challenge unlock a thing you don't have to grind to get I don't know, 800 Spidey bucks or whatever to unlock the <laughs> the future uh, costume. Uh, buy 800 spider silk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't give them ideas. Um, but anyways, the way he said it was that like AAA publishers are not AAA publishers, um, game or platform holders. So Microsoft, Nintendo and, and Sony still have um are are still incentivized to design games that attract people to their platform because they're also looking to sell hardware and get people in their ecosystem participating in their programs um you know Xbox Live PlayStation well they all of them have their online services that you have to pay for um they have their you know game pass system systems and things like that 
So they're incentivized to make really good actual games to draw people to the platform. And I know that there's still a cynical sort of angle off of that, but what, you know, at the end of the day, like they're making good games. Mm -hmm. Um, And this year it just so happened to be Sony was on top with the games that they've developed, but each of the platform holders have developed some excellent games in the last couple of years. I mean, Nintendo really had the spotlight last year with the launch of the switch. Um, and or no, I guess that was that you this year. I guess it was this year. God, it's been a long year. <laughs> um, uh, it's almost like the news is uh, just dragging this year out longer and longer. Oh, oh, yeah, I just, I just thought of something. But th- th- this makes Trump right. The Mueller investigation has gone on forever. <laughs> oh no, Trump was right. Bloody um, clock. But I guess it was earlier in the year, and both of Sony's releases have been later this year. But, you know, with Super Mario Odyssey, is that what Odyssey. it was? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Zelda, the newest Zelda game. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the Mario game where we discovered Mario isn't human, he's a hat. Yeah. But, you know, Nintendo had those games. Sony had its couple of big hitters this year. Microsoft, not so much. They made a couple of swings, but they seem to have been misses. Um, They didn't really seem to have any major, major first-party titles this year. But, you know, last year or a couple of years ago, they had Halo, and Forza is a big seller for them. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, they've all got their hats in the ring with, like, real games um, as opposed to microtransaction-laden bullshit. (laughs) So, yeah, go Sony! Your turn. Well, mine is a bit of an odd one. All right, but okay. hear me out here. The Library of Congress. Okay. Uh, for allowing a, an exemption in the DMC, uh, or sorry, the DMCA, to allow the preservation of games, particularly online games, or opening the uh, window for it, I should say. Uh, granted, you know the DMCA is a bunch of bullshit, but it is a step in the right direction for the preservation of the games in general because the gaming industry wants to treat their history as either a throwaway you know yeah you know, or it's yeah you know, it's last year's game why do you want to play last year's game you have this year's call of duty you have yeah this year's man or they want to keep re-releasing it re-releasing it and maybe polish it a little also known as the nintendo model uh but proper preservation is a bit of a rarity Especially the consoles, where you know backwards compatibility is pretty much a non thing now, unless you know it's just the digital versions. Uh, not true with Microsoft. Yeah, Microsoft well, has got compatibility going all the way back to original Xbox titles on disc. You can, I mean, you can also get them digitally, but okay, so I forgot about that one. But Microsoft's the only one that does that. Sony, you can only do it digitally, and Nintendo has only got digital as well through their eShop. Okay, so I forgot about Nintendo doing that. But to be fair, you know, I don't really play a, a Xbox game, so... Yeah, you're not a big console guy. That's okay. I'm a big guy, but you're not a big console guy. Hey, you're a big guy. Uh, But being able to have this window where proper game uh, preservation is made legal because the DMCA is rather draconian in its uh, copyright protection... <laughs> Uh, to the point where, uh, if I remember correctly, on the screensavers in the uh, yeah when the DMCA first came out, and they were talking about uh, it being illegal to circumvent copy protection. So if you take a sharpie and uh, uh, blank out the the copy protection uh, track on a CD, on, you are a criminal, and how ridiculous that is. Yeah. How in the hell can you blank out just that one track with a Sharpie? Come on, guys. Sharpies have got fat points. You'd be blanking out more than just the, the copyright spot where the copyright is. Um, I have a ah. fine point Sharpie. You see the way I took that joke there, didn't you? Huh? Huh? I, I wasn't aware I'm that was even my a mind. joke. I'm losing my mind. I, I, I would say uh, you need the past tense on that. Fair play. <laughs> 
Uh, but uh, mostly for the just the preservation of games. Uh, I think the Library of Congress deserves, you know, a, a, a pat on the head, you know? You Woo. did good. Now, now if you could uh, reform the DMCA. Uh, you're getting a, a line to the blow drops today. I'm sleepy. You know, uh, some people, whenever they're sleepy, they suck thumbs. Well, you know, just give me a big old bag of dicks. It's better, right? Well, uh, we know what's on your wish list now. <laughs> now, do you want the uh, the multi flavored uh, gummy dicks, or do you want a single flavor uh, bag of dicks? Uh, multi flavor, please. Okay, get the fruity variety. Um, okie dokie. Next on my list, I'm going to list another uh, major name in the game: Microsoft, for their controller they developed. Up oh, there's the one off my with list: physical disabilities. Yeah, you hit my list now. Woo, suck it. No, I thought you were the one. Well, you can you can suck it too. Um, but yeah, gaming is something that has always been hard for people if they don't have two hands that function fully. You might get by with one for certain games, or there have been custom controllers that you've been able to purchase in the past. You know, there have been people. Yeah, Ben Heck uh, did uh, videos on him building single handed controllers that uh essentially the second joystick it, or thumbstick is a joystick that's on the bottom of it that you roll with uh your uh on it your on your leg not ideal but it works but having a set platform that you could plug and play whatever uh, uh would help you the best yeah and this is a it, fully modular controller like straight out of the box with different yeah, I've actually vehicles. suggested this to a couple people I've seen online uh, there was one person on Reddit was talking about how their mother has severe arthritis uh, and uh, isn't able to uh, play games all that well anymore. And they wanted to try to do like a joystick or something. And I suggested the adaptive controller. I'm not sure if they used it, but no, yeah. I, I am promoting it as much as I can. Because yeah, I, I want to see this succeed because, yep, gaming with a disability is difficult, if not impossible, just because. Uh, game developers just don't think about that. I mean, even uh, something as benign as colorblindness is often overlooked. Yeah. Which is a lot um, more common uh, of a disability. Yeah. Or have, you know, uh, all the uh, uh, all the cues in a game be audio. It's another one. So deaf uh, players or, play, or players that have hearing impairment uh, impairedness will also be uh, uh, excluded. There's not a really a set uh, set of standards for uh, disabilities in general in gaming and how to uh, approach uh, designing around them. Uh, just because the industry is still so young, yeah. But it's yeah, having something like this out there by a major company. Uh, is a step in the right direction and a step in the right direction for awareness of this problem. Indeed. And currently, I mean, something could change, I guess, between now and the time this episode releases, but currently it works for uh, Xbox consoles, PC, and Switch. Yeah, I so saw that as well. Switch. I mean, technically it's just an uh, X input controller, so anything that uh, could accept it would work uh, with it. Yeah. So it's probably the Switch is seeing it like a pro controller. Yeah, which is cool. I hope they don't change that. But Nintendo often has to Nintendo. So I could see them being like, yes, we don't want our competitor's hardware working with our hardware. And finding well, some way to block it. Well, they just recently uh, announced that they're allowing free advertising again. Oh. Uh, the Creator Studio or the Creators Club? Yeah. Yeah, they just announced uh, about a week ago now, which it's going to be on the docket. I just haven't put it there yet, uh, that they're shutting it down and just putting in uh, some guidelines. Wow. Yeah, a, a Japanese com a company uh, coming to the 21st century. Nintendo's not Nintendoing right now. Good for no, them. No, they'll Nintendo hard next year. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure they will. They'll uh, introduce a. An N64 inspired controller that has four like places to hold instead of three. The pitchfork. Play the they, had, 
you, you had the uh, Trident uh, with the N64. Now it's the Pitchfork. <laughs> nice. Now, now you're playing with Pitchforks. All right. So, okay. Turn. I have one that uh, would probably be a little bit surprising until I give you all the details. Okay. Blizzard. Okay. Uh, you're, you're 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 not sure where I'm going. I'm with completely this, surprised. I have no idea where you're going with this. Particularly the StarCraft team for earning Total Biscuit and giving away the proceeds, past and future, of his voice pack to his widow and son. Okay. If that doesn't deserve on the nice list, I don't know what does. Because Fair that uh, when Total Biscuit died, there was a lot of heartfelt tributes and a lot of people offering and uh, doing things for the family left behind. But this is the one that stuck out to me because this is something that Blizzard did that went far beyond what they had to. They could have just said, okay, well, we're going to do a charity sale of his voice pack. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, uh, there's a uh, voice packs uh, that's essentially, you know, just a cos uh, technically cosmetic uh, in the game where instead of the default announcer in your match, It'll be, you know, whatever the voice pack is for that. Well, Total Biscuit did one uh, before he got uh, uh, sick, or I should say sicker, because I believe he still had his cancer at the time. And uh, when he died, Blizzard announced that his pack, uh, instead of just being a charity sale like a lot of other people were doing, they were uh, going back and retroactively giving all the proceeds that that uh, pack has given that has generated and the future proceeds to his family. I mean, just far beyond uh, what was expected of him. Yeah. I had honestly forgotten about that. I know we talked about it. It maybe not on the show, but you know, we talked about it, the two of us, mm -hmm. but yeah, I just, just forgot. Whoops. <laughs> Okie dokie. My turn again. Uh, Valve. Valve did a couple of things that I thought were nice this year. Um, but specifically, the one that has both affected me the most and that I think I like the most is uh, the changes that they made to their chat interface. Um, they made it... I mean, they, I, I think that they, in large part, copied a lot of stuff from Discord. But it makes the chat much more usable and friendly um, you can set up favorite lists. You can do group chats, drop pictures and things into the chat, and then they'll and pop so, and up. And that sometimes works. <laughs> well, it's always worked for me. It don't. It sometimes works for you. But you know, I was like, introduced a clicker game. Free I was try, trying to try, free try. <laughs> nice. I was uh, trying to pick out like one or maybe two, uh, you know, final things from my list. And I was sitting at work today, and I like I had been chatting with you about it. And I was like, you know what? I really like the Steam chat now, so I'll I'll put that in there on the nice list. I mean, well, Valve has so many cock ups, mm -hmm. not like typically not super major things, not as bad as what we listed out. But they have lots of minor changes or stuff that they like. Oh yeah, we're gonna do this, and then they abandon it. But to follow yeah. through on something, it's like okay, good job, guys. I'm going to give you a pat on the back. This is just pat on the back. Like, let's, let's and suck. you're also going to suck off Gaben. Well, I mean, I would do that anyways, though. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'll praise Lord Gaben. If that man wants his dick sucked, he'll get his dick sucked. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is that you have to uh, get a, a, you know, a, a crate key to be able to unlock his pants. <laughs> oh, I've got the master key when it comes to that. You know, it's kind of funny that you mentioned Valve because I also have Valve. Wow. For something different. Cool. What you got? Well, it, mine's a two-parter, so I can't, technically could do a, two, uh, a twofer for this, but I, I smashed them together. Uh, for partly at least trying to clean up some of the mess that they made last year with the Steam Direct system, but also broadening on what is allowed on Steam in the first place by giving some more legitimacy to uh, a more adult games. Yeah, that's a good thing. I thought about that, actually, and then I decided not <laughs> to put it. I don't know why. I just was like, eh, I've got this other thing for Valve. <clears throat> uh, well, they've uh, 
really cracked down on the what they call the troll game or the non game, where it's something that's just meant to be outrageous and to generate cards. They've really started to crack down on those, but they've also allowed you know, nudity, for example, and more adult content to make it more legitimate. You know, yeah, because before that, uh. You would either have the patches, uh, which part of the time just either doesn't work or, you know, you have to start digging for them. And honestly, you feel a little bit like a creep. Okay, I shouldn't say you, but most people feel like a little bit of a creep have to <laughs> ask. <laughs> uh, or uh, at one point, Valve was actually starting to crack down on the patches because they viewed that as a workaround until they announced that they were just going to allow things uh, pretty much whole hog. I mean, it has added more trash to Steam, but uh, that's more of a failing of their tagging system and their search engine, which, you know, that they, they, that doesn't deserve a naughty list, uh, but, you know, it does deserve a bunk in the head, but eh. Uh, different right. head. Different head. Wink. Uh, but, but yeah, oh, that's uh, my version of Valve. <laughs> hey, what? Uh, uh, you get to give uh, Gabe in two blue jobs now. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Next thing on my list, uh, Hello Games, the developer of No Man's Sky. In case you don't recognize that. Yeah, it's probably um, a good thing we didn't do this last year, <laughs> because this I would think... probably be the first one that we would give a, both a naughty and nice to. Yeah. Um. I mean, over the last couple of years, they have really been working to actually meet their promises, which I'm not excusing the launch. I'm not doing that. But they could have cut and run. You know, they could have just taken all the money they got from all the overhype and the marketing push from Sony and just been like, well, we're done. We're moving on to a new project now. Everyone hates it. But instead, they spent two years really working on perfecting the game and putting in the most of the features that they promised. You have to admit um, that I am surprised that they've uh, kept at it. And, you know, this year they released their biggest update yet with like the most changes, adding in the full multiplayer system, the third person view, all of the, you know, revamped economy and everything. Um, I mean, quite a few people in our audience have played it since that, uh, that update or, patch or whatever you want to call it like all these things have been free uh and they could have like other companies that we've talked about on the naughty list would have released these things as dlcs or microtransactions or season passes or go man scott 2 yeah yeah or, or a completely separate game but they just keep updating the current game and i haven't looked at like a development um sort of calendar or anything. I don't know when they're planning on stopping or when they're planning on charging for content in the future. But, I mean, two years of... Uh, they've had three or four major updates, which all would have been part of, like, a season pass for a AAA developer. Each one has added or changed major things to the game. And they've just slowly been working at getting it to where they said it was going to be when it launched. So... You know, no excuse for the bad launch, but they've earned quite a bit of respect from me with the fact that they didn't do one of the two things that other developers would do. Either just cut and run, you know, take the money and run, or say, well, you know, development costs and all that. We'll do this, but you need to buy a season pass to get it. They didn't do that. So they're on the nice list. Yeah, it looks like there's... Uh, some sort of uh, another update beyond next. Uh, what comes after next? <laughs> uh, uh, the community season looks like more uh, focused around events and multiplayer. Okay. All right, this is a very short article from July, so oh, not very fleshed out. But uh, there, there is beyond. Uh, there is something beyond next. The only I have to say to them, the only thing I have to say to them is fix your shit with amd hardware fix it please so it doesn't run like ass every time i land on a planet and get near my base anyways your turn 
Uh, uh, well, I'm done. Oh, okay. Um, I have okay. one more. This one will just be a quick one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Twitch with Twitch Prime. Um, I know that all of this stuff is going away at this point, but it was still a high point of the year. Uh, if you had Twitch Prime for several months this year. Yeah, are they announcing that you're no longer getting games as well? Or I know that they're no longer selling games. Yeah, I, I don't think that you get games anymore. I don't think that's part of it anymore. That's disappointing. That but uh, but to be fair, at least for me, I, yeah, I wasn't subscribed to Twitch Prime. I had it through Amazon Prime. Yeah, same. Um, but for a while, I mean, Twitch was giving away at least one game a month, oftentimes multiple games a month, um, multiple sort of packs for things. Like they gave away some stuff for Warframe. They gave away some stuff for World of Warships. Um, and that was nice. Like it was nice, like to log into Twitch and, and get a reward. I picked up, I don't know, a dozen or so games this year that I didn't have via Twitch Prime. And yeah, sure, I have to go to the Twitch app to launch them, but free games. Woo. I mean, I guess technically I was paying for it because Amazon bought Twitch and, you know, that was just like mm-hmm. became sort of part of my Prime subscription for a while. But, you know, it was a additional value add that wasn't there before and that they never had to do in the first place. So. Yeah, they, but they, they also the nice could get on the naughty list for them removing ad free viewing for uh, Twitch Prime subscribers. They could, but I'm fo- focusing on the nice thing, not the naughty thing. Well, that's a first. <laughs> Touche. Touche. So, yeah, that was my nice list. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I ran out because you hit my Microsoft controller. But, yeah. hey, at least, I, at least I hit a couple things that you didn't think of. <laughs> you did. You did indeed. So I guess that brings us to the last part of this Christmas episode, which is our wish list for uh, mostly 2019, but maybe a little beyond as well, mm-hmm. depending on what some of the things you picked. So I've only got four. Well, on I have six, list. but we'll okay. see if we uh, uh, hit, hit doubles. Okay, so uh, I go first again. Yeah. And I feel for this one, I have to address it. Okay. Dear Satan, because this... As one of your disciples or one of your followers. <laughs> this is the one that, that I thought you, that I thought you would uh, love. By the way, you're right. I love where this is going so far. So, dear Satan, I've been doing this podcast for now going on three years, and every year there's this one thing I really don't look forward to. E3, more particularly. EA at E3. Could you tell EA to not bore me to fucking tears, get done with the goddamn sports, and how about show some actual interesting fucking games for once? I realize I'm not part of their uh, audience because I do not have enough zeros in my uh, bank account, at least on the proper side of the decimal point for them to be interested in me, but still, get their fucking act together. (laughs) Loves and kisses, rage. I think Satan is like turning tail and running away from that one. <laughs> he might be one of their disciples for all we know. Yeah, I agree. E3 is just a mess with the way studios treat it. Yeah, but particularly uh, had... EA is the worst. Yeah. We uh, we did not address the news about Sony saying they were pulling out of E3. Uh, one less but... snore fest. Yeah, I'm I'm really happy that they did that. I'm not uh, sure what E3 is going to do to replace it on the calendar, but. Uh, what, just let the journalists sleep through that? Uh, their, their last one that they did was just abysmal. It was terrible. It, it, it would have been uh, the worst uh, in the show if it wasn't for EA. But it's just EA is constantly worst because they shove all the sports ball in it as well. Yeah. And often it's very cringy on top of it. So cringy that even you don't like it. Yeah, I don't like EA's press conference. Not a, not one bit. I don't like anything about them, typically. They just don't uh, have any franchise that I'm really year. invested in anymore. Uh, what, you're not looking forward to uh, them remastering Command & Conquer? Well, I guess I'd be looking forward into that a little bit, as long as it's not filled with microtransactions and DLC and loot boxes, which it will be. <laughs> I've just accepted that it will be. 
doesn't mean I'm going to buy it. I'm not going to buy it if that's the case, but I've accepted that that's probably the case. But, okie dokie. Hey, but at least, uh, you know, uh, since we're not going to have Sony, we're not going to have a press conference where they spend half of it changing venues after doing one announcement. Yeah. Oh. So my first wish list item, I said earlier I was going to come back around loot boxes. Let's talk about loot boxes just one more time for mm-hmm. a minute. Uh, I wish that in 2019, all loot boxes are going to be gone due to either so much consumer backlash that they have to do something about it, or uh, government regulation, which seems like it's on the way. And, you know, I am I would much prefer that if the gaming industry could cool their jets and we don't have to get the feds involved, but it seems like that we're past the point of no return on that, so fuck them. They have to deal with the consequences of their actions, just like a toddler. Got to deal with the consequences of your actions. And then rub, your, uh, rub their nose in it. Right. Rub in that big old stinky pile of poo. You made this mess. You clean it up. But yeah, that's, I mean, that was it. Okay. For me, my next one is uh, a little bit more <sighs> wistful, I think. I, I know it's not going to happen, but at the same time, uh, I think I've pretty much resigned myself to, you know, remasters go- are going to happen no matter what, you know. I can't wish that away, but I got thinking about this and uh, especially uh, seeing people talk about stuff co- uh, cut from games uh, due to technical or time uh, restrictive reasons. Uh, the big ones I, already, uh, I always hear is both Shadow of the Colossus because they just didn't have the time to put in even half of what they originally wanted to and also Fallout uh, uh, New Vegas just because, uh, yeah. Bethesda being absolute idiots and not giving Obsidian you know, more than a year and a half to make a complete Fallout game. Which, to be fair, you know, for, uh, for Bethesda, you know, uh, Tom does not equal quality. Just look at Fallout 76. True that. But True that. When it uh, makes sense, I'd like to see a remaster be more than a remaster and look at some of the co- content and potentially put it back in. It happens every so often, but I'd like it to be more of a regular thing. Have it where, yeah, there could be a special edition of Shadow of the Colossus that is the full 24 uh, Colossi, for example. Or if we ever see a remaster of of Fallout New Vegas, go back to the notes and actually put in all the content for Seizure's Legion. So it's actually a real faction and makes a little bit more sense Uh, this is more of a long-term thing but it's more yeah like i said wistful wishful thinking yeah that would be really cool i mean it doesn't have to it doesn't make sense in every single game and then you also start hitting problems with balancing and all that uh but a remaster doesn't have to be you know just uh, we upscaled the graphics right can add more things and yeah, add to the original product or offer a well, more complete I'll, product than the original. Yeah, offer offer the intended product, particularly right. if they know that there's going to be an audience for it. You know, do a remaster of uh, Fallout New Vegas with uh, all the cut content in place. That that will sell like hell. Yeah, I'd buy that. Probably. Um. Then we could do another game club on it. <laughs> Woo. Speaking of wistful thinking and also Fallout, because Bethesda makes Uh-oh. Fallout. Um this one's slightly more extended than this year, but I want or next year, but I want, I hope, against all hope and rational thinking, that Bethesda learns a lesson from this Fallout 76 bullshit applies it to future game development so that I don't feel like an asshole when I buy Elder Scrolls 6. <laughs> uh, I got bad news for you. I didn't know. They, uh, didn't they talk about uh, loving their editor and their engine and all their uh, development tools? I know. Because it allows them to make fast content. But it's yeah. called a wish list, so I'm making a wish. Well, if you're wishing shit... <laughs> When you wish upon a star. 
but I don't think I, I don't think that they're in a, a completely wrong place. But at the same time, they're talking about making content quickly, not quality content. There's two distinct ends of the scale there, and they are really focusing on that quick buck, aren't they? Oh yeah. I mean, I'll be surprised if Elder Scrolls Six comes out before 2022. But well, didn't they know. say that uh, Elder Scrolls Six is considered a next gen title? Yeah, but I mean, 2022—that's three years. I mean, surely there'll be a new console generation within the next three years, and even if there's not, you know, PC hardware cycling and all that jazz. But this is an equal opportunity or equal opportunist like fuck up. They'll fuck up any version of any game at any time. They don't discriminate, so. Hell, they'll keep fucking up the same version of the same game, just re-releasing on different platforms. Touche. Touche. No, Skyrim. Scott, T- Tamriel. Tamriel. All right, what's your, what's, what's your next one? Uh, well, this one is also a lot more just wishful thinking because I know it's not going to happen. And uh, this is enough with chasing the damn trends. This isn't so much just bad Royale, but more just the industry's need to follow rather than to produce something new year after year after year, doubling and tripling down on the same genre, on the same formula, and outright killing uh, some. Uh, genres and forms of games just because they milk them to death. I mean, just look at the music game genre, for example. Look at yeah. what happened to uh, Rocks, or, uh, Guitar Hero. Sorry. Uh, uh, look what happened to Guitar Hero and the music uh, rhythm games like that. They just produced so many different versions. They produced so much crap that they drowned in it. MMOs are a a fairly decent example as well where everyone is chasing wow they're trying to be the next wow they're trying to be the uh, wow killer or at least they were i should say and i don't know about you but if i go online i I still see world of warcraft living yeah same all these uh, wow killers um a lot of them are uh living impaired right so I didn't put this on my list, but I thought about something similar to it. So maybe I just forgot to put it on my list. But I, as like an adjacent or a, an aside to what you just said about, um, you know, chasing trends or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, my, mine, uh, mine was, and again, I didn't put this down. I thought about it, so I must have forgot to write it down. But mine was that the next like gaming fad or whatever, now that I actually have some money and a little bit more time, to get into one uh, is something that I'm going to be like interested in. Uh, something that uh, you give a shit about. Yeah. Something that yeah, see, I gave up about that ages ago, but yeah. see, I really like the survival genre, but it's heyday has, and maybe it's a, a good thing. Like it's heyday seems to have mostly come and gone with only like sort of the cream of the crop surviving mm-hmm. or lasting. But, you know, having played a lot of planet explorers, which was a game that came out of that time period that, doesn't have anywhere near the same amount of sales or uh, draw of, you know, your Minecrafts, your space engineers, a couple of others that are uh, like your arc survival, maybe a couple others, um, but yet is as good or better than those games in many respects. It's like, I, I want to be there when games like that are coming out for whatever the next trend is. I mean, I'm not rich, but I do have a little bit of disposable income now, so I can buy some games more often without having to wait for sales. So I would uh, I would jump on a trend bandwagon if it was something. Well, I, was I have a little bit of in. disposable income too, but I wait for sales because I'm cheap. Yeah, fair play and easy. Fair play, but, just like you uh, like it. Woo! But so yeah, that was kind of an aside, a, a point adjacent to your point. Oh, but I'm glad you agreed with it. (laughs) I do agree with it. I do. Um, Okay, so my next one. uh, Again, a little bit more wishful thinking, although maybe less wishful thinking. Um, So we know that they're doing, 
or well, not that they're doing, but we know that they're at least talking or teasing the potential for a Command and Conquer remaster. Well, I want a Command and Conquer, I don't know if I, if I should say reboot or just continuation, but I want new, actual, good, well, properly designed PC versions of Command and Conquer games. I want to see that. I want one announced in 2019. Uh, with cheesy cutscenes? Absolutely. The more cheesy cutscenes, the better. That's the best part of it. You want the collector's edition to just have a block of Monterey Jack, don't you? Yes. And also like a 10-disc DVD or Blu-ray collection of all of the cheesy uh, FMV used and, in previous and games. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Uh, so I'm up uh, because that one's kind of short. Yeah. All right, I was just point. thinking about my fantasy of all of the FMV from Command & Conquer games. Get some like deleted scenes of uh, Red Alert 2 when you win and Tanya and I forget her name, but like your lieutenant are both like trying to take you to the ball and they like come in like sexy dresses and it's like, oh, we're going to have a threesome later. Like I want, I want that. <laughs> Okay, right, so, carry on. So mine is, if I get this, this is probably uh, going to be a lot of trouble. But I want to feel like less of a jackass when I buy a game. And to do that, I want to see game uh, makers unite. I want to see a unionization of the gaming industry so that there's proper employee protection well, in the industry. Because I have to admit that whenever I buy a, you know, a more high-end game, even when it's on sale, there's that kind of lingering, uh, kind of scummy feeling uh, knowing that uh, the uh, workers, uh, the developers that made this game, uh, were worked half to death for it. Right. And I want to see them see proper uh, compensation. But I do realize that it would cause a lot of trouble in the gaming industry because that would also cut into one's profit. And they would uh, be expect- making all the profit in the universe if they paid their workers a living wage and didn't fire them all the time. Uh, I mean the the triple A uh, work uh, the triple A uh, 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 CEOs they must be Ferengis or something. I mean, it's, the, <laughs> it's the only thing I can think of, you know. Well, they definitely are. Ed Cannon. <laughs> All CEOs are Ferengi. Except for Elon Musk, and he's like my beautiful baby face boy. Except so, when he uh, uh, except when he goes uh, on some sort of weird tr- uh, Twitter rant. Uh, talking about how divers are pedophiles or something. Yeah, it's still suck his dick. I'm just being real here. Don't support everything the man does, but <laughs> he's like a real life version of Tony Stark. And I would totally suck Tony Stark's dicks. So. I would say a slightly more sane uh, Tesla. I, I mean, I'd suck Tesla's dick too. <laughs> Let's go build a time machine. Yeah, but he wouldn't be interested in it because you're not a bird. Well, I'd figure something out. <laughs> You'd show up in a uh, at a pigeon outfit. <laughs> Works for me. Uh, th- th- that was actually a thing. Get it uh, on, Tesla. Uh, no, no, him uh, falling in love with a bird. I can imagine that. Tesla was a very eccentric man. Mm-hmm. All right. uh, but, yeah, I just don't want to see uh, uh, game developers. Well, I should say game workers uh, because it's not just the development teams. It's the art team, uh, uh, marketing, everything. Them being properly protected. Uh, that's right. my wish list. And I know probably the uh, most uh, you know, outside of legislation coming down, the most unlikely of my uh, wishes. <laughs> yeah. But it is a wish, so you're allowed to make it. Um, my final wish is one that's much less grand and overarching and useful to gaming. Uh, and it's I just really want the rest of the Battletech expansions to be good. I just really want to have like a game to look forward to in 2019. There are many fewer games that I'm aware of that I'm interested in that are coming out next year. So the one that I've got that's like at the top of my list right now, I'd love for it to just continue to be there to provide relaxation and entertainment for many months to come. So just a simple one there. 
Okay, well, uh, this one is uh, probably my saddest one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. I want to be surprised. I want my rather cynical view of the gaming industry to be challenged. I want to have the happier stories out because this last year has been kind of shit. And I just want uh, my game of the year. I want it to be something I haven't heard of, something that I'm not expecting. I want to be surprised again. Uh, and I want to have it be a good surprise, you know, something on the lines of, you know, Blizzard Starcraft team or the Blizzard's marketing team or whoever was in charge of that. Go up for my nice list. Them going above and beyond the Call of Duty to uh, uh, protect their uh, workers, to uh, produce a good game, to do good in the industry when there's so many scummy individuals. I just want to be a little less cynical. Most likely not going to happen, but... Well, Rage, we can find you a therapist somewhere, and they can help you work on that. That's a very achievable goal through therapy. You just want all my uh, Steam training cards. Hell yeah, I do. (laughs) Especially that foil one from like four or five years ago, the Steam summer sale. That's worth like two or three bucks now. Nice. That's the retirement fund. (laughs) Your little nest egg. All right. Well, I mean, I'm out. So what have you got left? All right. My last one is I'm, uh, yeah, life happened. So I didn't get to build the computer last year or in this last year, I should say. I want this stupid trade war to end so that prices of parts go down. And uh, while we're at it, how about we have RAM at a reasonable fucking price as well? That would be nice. I'm, I want to build a, a new PC this coming year, so that would be that would be nice. Just, uh, because Trump is such an oh, uh, what's the proper term? Oh yeah, fucking idiot. You can put a lot of things in there, and they would apply. <laughs> yeah, but he's not supreme ass clown. He takes because, that position. Uh, oh, that's uh, Ajit Pa. Oh right, you mentioned that earlier. Yeah, but besides uh, that, would. Uh, imply that he is the top and not the bottom when we both know that he's at Putin's bottom. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's just astonishing that just how inept he is. I mean, I had a low bar for him and you know, he surpassed that in you know, 12 hours. <laughs> yeah, he left that shit in the dust. That low bar stuff. I mean, I put the no bar. Yeah, I put the bar on the ground, and uh, he started digging. Yep, dig a hole and went right under it. So I just will do with his wall. (laughs) No, uh, the wall goes ten ten feet deeper now. Well, then they dig ten feet deeper. Look, ten feet uh, deeper. Uh, It's in bedrock now. And now, we're, and now we're surrounding the Flintstones, and we're going to make them pay for it. Because that Bam Bam, you know, he, he, he looks like an illegal. I mean, he's an immigrant, right? Yeah, and he's a child, so he's <laughs> double a double threat. Oh, got to tear gas him. We almost made it. <laughs> almost. <laughs> uh, but I didn't help things by putting the trade war in, but you have to admit that it would be nice that that would end, so uh, PC parts would go down. That would be beneficial. I'm sorry, I'm moving around in my chair. I, I ran over my shoe and I got my chair stuck. <laughs> I was about to say, do you need to go potty? Uh, maybe a little, but we're close to the end, so. I mean, that's the end of my wish list, unless we, well, you have something to surprise us with. Nope, that was my, all of our lists. Um, so yeah, that's it. <laughs> pack it up we're done here folks yeah and that's the end of the year as well because our uh, next episode would be releasing after the first it would be the 4th of uh, January indeed and for which, our new year's episode yeah, which would be a Franken episode right yeah we're not going to do it tonight because I'm too like wasted basically <laughs> to do but we are going to do a little bit for our new year's episode and then we're going to run some Franken content 
Um, and then things will get back to normal in January. Um, in case you or missed as it. normal as we get. Yeah. In case you missed the Game Club episode or something and you see this one. Uh, what what were we going to do for January Game Club? Is that when we're doing? Uh, well, we haven't, a- we haven't actually finalized that. Oh. Well, I had both Cube and Ghost ask me about doing Vampire. And I think January would be a good month to do it. It's a longer month. Mm-hmm. Um, technically, we'll have six weeks because we'll be wrapping up December Game Club in in two two weeks. I mean, you so, fired it up, and you had people uh, hounding you. I did. So I think we should do Vampire. I, I, fired, up, I fired it up, and nobody gave a shit. Well, everybody knows to talk to me instead of you, because I'm always like, you can talk to me whenever. Yeah, nobody talks to me. I talk to you. Because I love you. Hate me. <laughs> so, does, Hang on, does let that me mean... put that on my wish list. <laughs> <laughs> for people to hate Here's you Satan. or for people to talk to you? I don't know. I'm, I'm terribly confused right now. Talk to Rage. Tell him Merry Christmas, everyone. I'm pretending he can't hear me. What? I'm whispering in your ear, dear listener. I've just been sitting here quietly as if nothing <laughs> happened. So, yeah, did, I mean, did we just officially decide on Vampire for January? I guess so, unless, uh, you know, it uh, just completely crashes on uh, my test run. Sweet. Vampire for January. Unless things are different because we run into problems, in which case we'll clarify on Twitter or another episode. Speaking of the Twitters? Indeed. Um, I guess this is where I go for this. This is weird. So you see it one way. <laughs> Almost like we did it for so many episodes one way, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, if you want to find stuff. And then you change positions and, you know, it's just awkward. Indeed. Using muscles I haven't used before. Just get a few thrusts in and then it just doesn't work right anymore. I mean, YouTube. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to find, I mean, I'm just going to kind of blow through this because it's Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Enjoy your family. If you want to watch my stuff on YouTube, search for Gaming Psychologist. If you want to follow me on Twitter and you don't already, uh, follow me at JMA4707. Probably post some tweets about Christmas stuff. Today I posted that I ate cake for breakfast. And when I say today, I mean in the past, like four weeks. <laughs> but that was good. That was a good breakfast. Um, and then if you want to be my friend on Steam, send a friend request to jarthur4707. I accept all friend requests. And around Christmas time is when I always put together a little game giveaway. So if you're not on my friends list, you can't get any games. So if you are a listener to the show, you have a Steam account, but you're not friends yet with me, Send me a friend request. You might get a game. Um, it just kind of depends on what the Steam sale does for, you know, what games are available on sale, if there's any potential bundles or anything like that. One year, I think I gave away, like, 15 games. So, Yeah, you know, some of them were actually good. Some of them were. Lots of them were garbage. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> it's like a roulette wheel. Of bad racks. Yep. Uh, and now uh, the Garfield car- cart is the new meme to give away. It is a terrible game. Or have you seen that one going around? I have not seen that one. But... I saw it originally on Chrono GG, their coin shop, and it looked terrible. And I guess it gained traction there because people have been buying it left and right and uh, gifting it to people. I see it pop up every so often in the gaming subreddits. Gotcha. Um, what about you? Where can they find you and your stuff? Well, first of all, you need the password. What's that password, Rach? The password for the Christmas episode is Bah Humbug. <laughs> That's about right. Bah Humbug. That's about right. Fuck Christmas. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, giving... all right, go ahead. Not I'm, giving say, I'm, not, I'm not giving Jesus any blowjobs. Me and Jesus, we're not tight. Anyways, um, carry on. Not, not with the Jeebus? Not down with the Jeebus. Oh, well, if you wish to catch my stuff, you can find me over at Gaming with Caffeine Rage on the YouTubes. Catch me occasionally on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash K 
caffeine underscore rage. Or you can see me uh, tweet occasionally on the Twitter, Gaming with CR. And since I don't have a set schedule on Twitch, that's also the best place to find out when I'm going to be streaming outside of just following me and getting a notification when I eventually just go live. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, there are links to all our stuff if you missed it on the official BGL page, bglpodcast.podbean.com. Uh, which is paid for by our lovely, lovely patrons. And if you wish to contribute, patreon.com slash VGL podcast. And since we didn't have a community corner in the Christmas episode, maybe we should have done, uh, done a call out for content for that. Now that I think about it next year, next year, right? If we do <laughs> this again. <laughs> yeah. We say we'll plan it next year, but no guarantees. Uh but if you wish to let us know about your wish list, uh, if you have an entry for your naughty or light, nice list, or if you want to just send us your letters, voicemails, game related topics, or question us, vglpodcast at gmail.com or just tweet it to us at vglpodcast. Uh, are we doing the normal intro uh, music? Oh, I didn't even think about that. Um, uh, uh, Kevin I'll, McLeod I'll... will have something. <laughs> yeah, I'll find something Christmassy from from Kevin McLeod. Uh, insert um, uh, title here uh, from Kevin McLeod, and you can find his work at incompetech dot com. <laughs> and uh, I just I, I got to that point and thought, wait a minute, are we doing on the ground? <laughs> Honestly, I didn't even think about it. Uh, as always, though, as some music goes across my voice. <laughs> well, bye now. Uh, also. Merry Christmas! Hopefully. Don't forget Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and, and most importantly of all, Festivus. Boxing Day. What? I, you don't think I would appreciate a holiday that has the airing of grievances? And also Boxing Day. <laughs> Anyways, bye-bye! <Bye-bye. laughs>